Welcome my MTG friend zealots. Let us do a commander deck tech. This is one of the pre-constructed decks from commander 2021. It is Cassetto Orachi Arch Mage. It is in blue and green and this is a fun one. We're going to be doing a really gross build here. We're taking all the pre-con and we're shaking it all up and we're turning it into yes just like the title of this episode we're turning it into in fact oh we're gonna get some friends out of this build for commander all right so let's jump in let's talk about cassetto originally we're not doing tribal snakes here we're actually doing mostly infect creatures but we also have some snake action in here as well because there are actually a few that have infect as well. We're not doing completely 100% infect. There's some death touch shenanigans as well with a uh, card fin, which we'll talk about later. So let's jump in. Cassetto Orachi Archmage. It is for green blue. Target creature can't be blocked this turn. If that creature is a snake, it gets plus two plus two until end of turn. So we have the unblockable mechanics, which is very, very great, especially with a creature with infect and in case you didn't know this already in fact is any opponent if they get 10 effect infect counters they lose the game now that's each player so assuming you're playing against three other people you'll have to whack each of them for 10 total infect each all right and we're gonna get there we have some mechanics in here that's gonna make that possible this is a fun one and a nasty one all right, so as in all of our decks, we have some different packages. We got the control package, which is fairly minimal in this one. In fact, we got a whole lot of that going on. A few protection pieces, some of my favorites, uh, a few tutors, some ramp, some death touch, like I was saying. And then, of course, we have our land, our draw. And then we have a section here, which is proliferate, which is for proliferate, it just take any counters that are going and you can actually choose which ones you want to uptick or downtick depending on if they're minus one counters or plus one counters. So for in fact, if they have an effect counter, proliferating those actually ticks it up by one. Let's jump into the first package, which is control. And only bit goody, we have counter spell for two, counter target spell as it's being cast. Next up, we have a card that is doing double duty, Fuel for the Cause. It is a four drop counter target spell, then proliferate. And like I was saying earlier, you choose any number of permanents and or players with counters on them, then give each another counter of a kind already there. So if they have five infect poison counters, then they would have six because of proliferate. All right, next up is Mana Drain. Counter target spell at the beginning of your next main phase. Add an amount of colorless equal to that spell's converted mana cost. If you do not have the budget for this, swap it out for another counter spell or maybe a three drop counter spell. Whatever tickles your fancy. All right, this one is also double duty because it's also a creature, Mystic Snake. Snakes are good in this build. Mystic Snake is a colorless green, blue, blue. With Flash, when Mystic Snake enters the battlefield, counter target spell. All right, next up is Plasm Capture. Two green, two blue, instant counter target spell. At the beginning of your next pre-combat main phase, add X mana in any combination of colors to your mana pool, where X is that spell's converted mana cost. And like I was saying, if there are other counter spells that you prefer, by all means, this one's in green, blue. This one's pretty effective. All right, next up is Void Slime, green, blue, blue, instant counter target spell, activated ability or triggered ability. So this has a lot of versatility in its card built in, baked in. Very much a good card. Hmm, that was some seriously interesting English I just used. <laughs> All right. All right, next we are up into Ramp. Arcane Signet, of course, we're going to run that. Cultivate so that we can ramp up with Land. We're going to hit Hull Breacher, which is nice. Also double duty. It's got Flash, so it's a 3-2 body. If an opponent would draw a card except the first one they draw in each of their draw steps, instead you create a treasure token. Treasure token we can use to crack 4 mana. Lotus Cobra. 
So it's a snake as well as some landfall mechanics. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, add one mana of any color. Sakura Tribe Elder, also a snake. So that works well also with our commander. It's a two drop one one search. Your library for a basic land card if you sack it. Put the card on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle your library. Simic Signet in our colors. Sky Shroud Claim. Search your library for up to two forest cards. Put them onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Soul Ring. Sword of the Animus. This is a nice little one to attach to our creatures, especially if they're unblockable. And we can go ahead and search your library for a basic land card put it on the battlefield tapped and that's when your creature attacks so you can attack this thing if your commander's out there and make it unblockable that's pretty nice pretty nice indeed talisman of curiosity also in our colors does one ping damage Bident of Fassa. whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player you may draw a card and for two creatures your opponents control attack this turn if able just a nice utility card in terms of an artifact all right and then we're also in draw coiling oracle also a snake uh whenever coiling oracle enters battlefield reveal the top card of your library if it's a land card put it on the battlefield otherwise put the card into your hand so we can ramp up with this and also draw consecrated sphinx one of my favorites uh i don't like the secret layer version of this let's put on the version i like there we go it's a flyer a six drop whenever an opponent draws a card you may draw two cards it's a four six flyer which is nice on its own but with that extra nice draw mechanics it is definitely an include edric spy master of trust it's a three drop whenever a creature deals combat damage to one of your opponents its controller may draw a card yep yes indeed more draw Ice Fang Kotal, it's a two drop flash flyer. When Ice Fang Kotal enters the battlefield, draw a card. Then it also has Ice Fang Kotal has death touch as long as you control at least three other snow permanents. So we actually are running uh, basic snow lands for this card. Actually, actually, actually. All right, moving on. Oakham Adversary, a very, very effective green card for draw. It's a four drop, two, three. That costs two less if an opponent controls a green permanent. And it's got death touch. And death touch is a factor with a couple of cards. Whenever Okame Adversary deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Yep. And Oran Viper. Whenever Oran Viper deals combat damage to a creature, destroy that creature at the end of combat. Whenever Oran Viper deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. Notice it doesn't actually say death touch. It just destroys that creature at the end of combat. All right, there you go. All right, next up. Ristic Study. Uh, whenever an opponent casts a spell, you may draw a card unless that player pays one. Really not much to say about this card. You've seen this in many, many of our decks. Moving on. Beast Within. All right, we're in removal now. Destroy target permanent. Its controller creates a 3-3 green beast creature token. Notice it says destroy target permanent. That can include lands as well if needed. Cyclonic Rift. Yep, oldie but goodie in blue. Return target non-land permanent you don't control to its owner's hand or pay the overload and do the same thing for all of the non-land permanents that aren't yours rapid hybridization Woo! almost didn't say that right one drop instant destroy target creature it can't be regenerated that creature's controller creates a three three green frog lizard all right now we're in uh, to a few snakes just snakes all by themselves although this is technically a changeling so it's everything changeling protection from black for four chameleon colossus gets plus x plus x until end of turn where x is its power this is a completely swappable card if you have a different creature you want to put in i like this card it's fun i decided to include it all right hex drinker also a snake a very very fun and cool one it's a one drop level up one just means for one you put a level counter on this level up only as a sorcery so between three and seven it becomes a four four protection from instance and if you have eight plus on it the level counters it has protection from everything yes sir and that's a six six snake a rooney i like this creature 
All right, Hooded Hydra. Also a relatively swappable card if there's something else you'd rather put in. Uh, the Infect creatures you, you probably don't want to pull out because we're real Infect heavy on this. X green green, Hooded Hydra enters the battlefield with X 1 1 counters on it. When it dies, create one uh, a 1 1 green snake creature token for each 1 1 counter on it. So it synergizes on the snake aspect with the commander and then you can morph for five and morph just means you put it on the table and then you can flip it up for five as hooded hydra is turned face up put five one one counters on it yes sir all right now we are into my favorite section of the commander build here and that is in fact in fact blight mama for two in fact and just to beat this dead horse to death, this creature deals damage to creatures in the form of minus one, minus one counters, and to players in the form of poison counters. Poison! And for two, you can regenerate it. Mm-mm, this thing becomes sticky. All right, Blighted Agent, same dealio. It's got an effect. Blighted Agent is unblockable. And remember, we only have to whack them for ten in effect. So that's pretty shenanigany shenanigan shenanigalicious shenanigalicious eh, whatever put in the comments what's your favorite iteration of shenanigans blight steel colossus the 12 drop trample infect indestructible and then it's got an added little bonus not just being a level 11 but if blight steel colossus would be put into a graveyard from anywhere reveal blight steel colossus and shuffle it into its owner's library instead that is lovely that way people can't be reanimating it out of your graveyard so that's pretty Bueno. Core Prowler for 4 2 2. In fact, creatures typically cost just a little bit more 1 pip, 2 pips. In fact, whenever Core Prowler is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, proliferate. Double duty. Yes, sir. We like that. We like the stonk. Corpse Cur for 4. Also, in fact, when Corpse Cur enters the battlefield, you may return target creature card with, in fact, from your graveyard to your hand. Yes, I love that. That is so great. Definitely worth the four to be able to grab something and bring it back. More corrupt. This, uh, more corrupt. More in fact. And this one is super duper gross. So you get an enchant creature, which means you control enchanted creatures. So you get to steal a creature. Yeah, buddy. And then on top of that, it gets in fact. Mm mm, delicioso. Cyst bearer for three, two, three. In fact, that's it. Just the regular old infector. Glistener Elf one drop with infect. Grafted Exoskeleton for four. A crypt creature gets plus two plus two and has infect. So some of our non-infect creatures we can now give infect. And whenever grafted exoskeleton becomes unattached from a permanent, sacrifice that permanent. Yep, yep, and yep. Alright, Necropede, another infectalicious early drop. When it is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you may put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. And keep in mind, if they have a wall of shenanigans and we have our commander out, we can use its mechanics to make some of these little wussy one ones go through unblockable, which for in fact, you just got to get to that finish line. No matter how much life they have, it doesn't matter. Phyrexian Hydra, five, drop seven, seven in with in fact if damage would be dealt to Frexing hydra prevent that damage put a minus one minus one counter on Frexing hydra for each one damage prevented that way now keep in mind once we get to the more proliferation section keep in mind that you choose which ones you proliferate so if you have a minus one minus one counter on Frexing hydra you do not have to proliferate that and give it yet another one just keep that in mind in the back of your head Frexian Swarm Lord for 644 four. Infect. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a 1 1 green insect creature token with Infect on the battlefield for each poison counter your opponents have. That can get way out of hand real quick. I've seen it happen with decks. It's awesome. Not awesome for your opponents, but it's awesome. Plague Mirror for 2 1 1 Infect. Add 1 to your mana pool. So, double duty on that one. Rot Wolf for 3. Whenever a creature dealt damage to by Rot Wolf this turn is put into a graveyard, you may draw a card. Also double duty. Triumph of the Hordes. If you just need to try to get it past that finish line. Till end of turn, creatures you control get plus one, plus one. And gain trample and infect. Booyah, booyah, socket to ya. 
Oh, I'm so witty. Uh, viral Drake for four, flying in fact, and then for four, you can proliferate. So it might not look all that crazy as a one four flyer, but the fact that you can use it to proliferate is a game winning mechanic. All right, now we have a little bit of death touch as well and some snakes and some other shenanigans going on. Ambush Viper for two. You got flash and death touch. So in a pinch, you can use it to kill off another opponent. Uh, for other fun things, you can drop it uh, on the end of your opponent's turn and do all sorts of fun things. Bow of Nelia for three. Attacking creatures you control have death touch. And for two, you can tap, choose one, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature. Or Bow of Nyla deals two damage to target creature with flying. Or you gain three life. Or put up to four target cards from your graveyard on the bottom of your library in any order. Man, that thing does a whole lot of things. But the main thing for this deck is it gives all of our stuff death touch. All right, and this one is what's super fun out of Kaldheim. It is Finn the Fang Bearer. If you got this bad boy out, it's got Death Touch, but whenever a creature you control with Death Touch deals combat damage to a player, that player gets two poison counters. Two, not one. So it is just great for this kind of deck with Death Touch, with uh, other shenanigans, and with Infect. I just love Finn the Fang Bearer. It's almost strong enough to build standard top meta decks uh, to poison counter people in the top meta, but there is just a lot of removal in standard right now in the form of red and black. So, mm -mm, hasn't quite found its footing in standard, but for Commander, at least as of this recording, this is a tasty vittle. Orin Frostfang, another one that gives all of our creatures in fact. Five drop attacking creatures you control have death touch. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. And it's also got a 2-6 body. And let's look at the better version. There we go. Oh, eh, whatever. All right, Contagion Clasp. Now this one is wonderful for proliferation when contagion class enters the battlefield put a minus one minus one counter on target creature so we can also do some spot removal if needed especially for things that are indestructible etc etc and then for four you can tap it proliferate very very nice inexorable tide we are in the proliferate obviously whenever you cast a spell proliferate boom shalaka laka Sword of Truth and Justin, this fits in swimmingly into this build. Crypt creature gets 2-2 two, two, and has protection from white and from blue. I love that it has for protection from blue. When every equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, put a 1-1 one, one counter on a creature you control. Then proliferate. Yes, yes. All of this proliferation is helping us get that poison counter count up to where we need it. And then uh, we got some Phyrexian mana shenanigans going on here. Three Phyrexian mana. And you can pay that with two life. Draw two cards. Then proliferate. So double duty, proliferation, and draw. Thrumming bird. Two drop, one, one flyer. Whenever thrumming bird deals combat damage to a player. Proliferate. Now we're into protection. We just have a few pieces. We have heroic intervention. All of our permits get hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. Prowling Serpopard. Whoa, man. That is a crazy name. That is crazy artwork, too. 4 3 Prowling Serpopard can't be countered. Creatures, spells you control can't be countered. Yeah, I like that. That's a cool card. And uh, it's a snake, too, if you notice. Snake. Snake, snake, snake. Veil vale of Summer. Hey, do I need to explain this card? No, I don't need to explain that card. All right, we are into some tutorific stuff. Uh, I would say this is technically a tutor because you're fetching up a creature, which is pretty nice. Finale of Devastation, X green, green. Search library and or graveyard for a creature card with converted mana cost X or less. And put it on the battlefield. If you search your library this way, shuffle it. If X is 10 or more, creatures you control get plus X plus X and gain haste until end of turn. So if the game has stalled out and you are doing this for 12... 13, 40, for 14, uh, you can go grab uh, the Blightsteel, and then it'll have haste. So that's lethal, folks. Lethal. Indeed. Mystical Tutor. Man, I do not like this version of Mystical Tutor. I'm used to seeing Mirage. There we go. That's what I like to see. 
All right, so mystical tutor. It's the tutor in blue that we can fetch up an instant or a sorcery and put on top of our library. Worldly tutor, same thing for green. Search for a creature, put on top of our library. So that's a really good way of fetching up some of our infect cards or utility uh, creature cards if you need it. All right, we're into land. We're going to blast through this fairly quickly. Now, this is a fairly reasonable costing land package here. Uh, you can, of course, remove a couple of the dual lands that are more spendy and put in other dual lands. Absolutely. Especially the OG original gangster uh, dual land, uh, you know, from Revised and Unlimited and all those others. All right. I do digress. Alchemist Refuge for two, you may cast non-line cards this turn as though they had flash. That'll be super useful if we're trying to get stuff without summoning sickness. Uh, this is that uh, dual land in your hand. Choose one or the other. Green, blue from Kaldheim. Bark Channel Pathway. Breeding Pool. The uh, Shock Land. Command Tower, yep, of course we're going to run Command Tower. Exotic Orchard, yep, we're going to run that. A lot of these don't really need explanation. Hinterland Harbor, this is the dual land that if you show a forest or an island, it comes in untapped. Ink Moth Nexus, this is a utility card for being able to turn it into a 1-1 artifact creature token with flying and in fact. So that's why this is in here. Karn's Bastion, so that we can proliferate for four. Misty Rainforest, so we can fetch a forest or island for one life. Prismatic Vista, also for one life. We can go fetch up a color we need. Rejuvenating Spring, another one where it's dual if we have, I believe, two or more uh, opponents. Which, yep, that's right. Rogue's Passage, this is, again, another way to make our creature unblockable for four. We got Snow-Covered Lands. We're running a lot of basic lands here. Uh, that are snow lands. We got 11 forests and 10 islands. All right, we got the tropical island, which uh, is let's just let's just say is spendy. Uh, if you have it, run it. If you don't, put in another dual land because that is totally acceptable. All right, Yavi Maya Coast. This is one that pings you for one for the colors we need, and that brings us. Full circle to Cassetto Orachi Archmage. It is a fun, very infectious <laughs> deck, and it's awesome. Um, again, please hit subscribe if you're new. Hit that like button whether you're new or not. It is incredibly helpful. Uh, have fun with this. Put stuff in the comments if there's cards I hadn't thought of. If there is praise you would like to give me, give us. Uh, be a part of the MTG Friends Collective. We really appreciate it. We got big things coming down the pipe. Uh, we got a storefront coming. We got a whole website asset thing going. We got all sorts of things. We have some uh, card sorting machines that we're building. I mean, we just got some cool stuff going on. Be a part of it, MTG friends. Thanks for checking us out. Check out the other episode. All right, peace.